Good morning to you, wherever you may be in the world today. Alan Clements here in Los Angeles, uh, United States of America. Uh, March 30th, 2021, an ongoing series of talks um, on behalf of Burma, Myanmar, their ongoing courageous civil disobedience movement to confront the injustice, the tyranny, the evil of Ming Online and his state administration council, known by the acronym MASAC, the latest terrorist organization designation of that terrorist group on the planet. Today's talk, uh, in anticipation tomorrow in New York, of an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council, and if I'm not mistaken, initiated by England to convene in secrecy 15 members of the Security Council to be briefed by the Special Envoy to Myanmar. I think her name is Christine. Um, I'm not her last name at the moment eludes me and to be briefed on the the details of slaughter horror tyranny and terror I hope there are videos shown and a discussion I imagine sitting in on that discussion I imagine listening to that discussion the world will be listening what will it take is the question that I have what will it take to instigate within that body a crack from the coma of complacency and to give life to conscience and dignity and what's known as the right to protect principle. I think it was brought forth in the United Nations back in 2005. The right to protect a sovereign nation, the people, from the tyranny, the ethnic cleansing, a genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity being inflicted against them by a body, an institution, a terrorist group, a militia, an army. That is happening today in Myanmar. The right to protect principle should be, I pray, is on the table and presented in unmistakable lucidity. And I only wish, and I'm going to talk about it today, what will it take? What will it take to go beyond political puppeting and uh, those puppets of profit and prestige and power? And those rare women and men in the world who are authentic, warrior-like leaders. And that, to me, is really the issue at stake here. The distinction between a compromised, predictable puppet who is driven primarily by profit, prestige, and the status quo of indignity. placing those very, very human, but very decrepit values and principles over decency, dignity, and the right to protect an innocent population from a body within its own country that is committing genocide, ethnic cleansing, war crimes, crimes against humanity. And may I include assassination, vicious forms of mind-boggling torture, escalating terror, merciless murder of teenagers, unarmed, even children, in the name of maintaining dictatorship tyranny, totalitarianism, 
and terror. The former Prime Minister of Australia, Kevin Rudd, he and 44 or 45 other former world leaders, including de Klerk of South Africa, who was the current president of the Global Leadership Federation, issued a very terse public statement. It can be read online. The Sydney Morning Herald published it. Mr. Rudd is quoted as saying, all other options are gone in relationship to how to deal with over two months of increasing, escalating slaughter and terror committed by Ming Online and his newly designated terrorist organization, MASAC, the State Administration Council in Myanmar, the Khmer Rouge, the Taliban, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, whatever you want to say, the Boko Haram, unremitting terror, perversely celebrated, we've seen the videos, the people on the ground know this, perversely celebrated on armed forces a day alone in Myanmar, Ming Online and his terrorist goons celebrated this so-called armed forces day with a mass slaughter of innocent protesters and people. I want to keep presenting in context tomorrow in New York, the United Nations Security Council, 15 members, including of course Russia and China and Vietnam and India, four countries that have some reticence about stating the obvious that Mr. Rudd and 44 other world leaders have made perfectly clear to the conscience of civilized leaders and people worldwide, there is nothing left to do than to invoke nothing left to do than to invoke the right to protect principle, R2P, <clears throat> right to protect. When a country, a body, a nation, an organization, in this case, MASAC, the terrorist organization formerly known as Burma's Armed Forces, also known by the Burmese word, the Thamada, it is no longer an armed forces. They're using the camouflage of military garments. And now they're a bona fide terrorist organization, unmistakably clear to former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd and 45 other very respected world leaders, including the former Prime Minister or President of South Africa, the clerk. They're making it perfectly clear within hours of the convening of the United Nations Security Council. We're telling you, we're telling you what to do. Put it right in the center of your heart. Invoke what the United Nations has done. Is it close to 70 or more times? the right to protect, to intervene. Obviously, the United Nations intervened in the Korean War and the so-called Gulf War. 35 nations around the world in a coalition confronted Iraq due to its invasion and annexation of Kuwait over oil prices and distribution. This isn't about oil alone get into that in a minute. This is about human life. This is about an unremitting loss of conscience by the former military in Burma to move into a full-blown terrorist organization 
that is unwilling to hear the world community and leaders over two months now, set aside the last 60 years. This is not something new, but it has become unmistakably clear the true nature of this military that Do Aung San Suu Kyi, now detained, imprisoned, along with the president and lots of other leaders, for 11 straight years on top of 20 years, embarked upon a noble path of empowering civilian dialogue with this present day terrorist group, formerly known as the Thamada, the military, that they themselves in a 2008 military drafted constitution, the Tan Shui constitution, they have revoked that. They have imprisoned the elected members of parliament. We have one of the most serious political and human crises that we have seen in modern times happening right at this moment in Myanmar. All means prior to this United Nations emergency meeting have been exhausted. The people of Burma voted and spoke. The response, terrorize, kill, torture, imprison, and I dare you seek democracy in the way in which it's understood by the United Nations and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. If you think that that's democracy and you think freedom of expression is to say what you want, free of fear and persecution, if you do not believe that if we don't like what you do, we can assassinate you, kill you and torture you, if that is what you think democracy means, well, Masak, Ming Online, you have proven yourself. You have no clue. You're a sociopathic serial killer. You are invoking murder on the people and the very right to protect principle enacted by the United Nations, by all honorable members of that institution. You have violated the very sanctity of that principle. And there is no ambiguity about your increasing the terror and the murder and the annihilation of innocent protesting people who simply wanted to abide by an election and a democracy that you orchestrated. And for whatever reason, you did not like what you saw as results. And so the result of that is to murder, assassinate, torture, kill without impunity? No. It's a world community in the United Nations Security Council, initiated by England tomorrow, will meet and the former Prime Minister of Australia, Kevin Rudd, and 45 elected leaders, former leaders, have made it unmistakably clear, invoke, invoke. There is no measure left for us to do. Masak, the terrorist group, Ming Online, is out of control. The word emergency here, moving into the second half of the talk, emergency. In my country here in America, emergency means 911. That is an indelible set of numbers placed in sequence that give us instantaneous recognition. The crisis could not be more serious. Emergency. It could mean a child has been kidnapped. It could mean there's an active killer on my block. That could mean there's a rapist in my home. That could mean that there is a serial killer on the loose like we've seen in Atlanta, in Boulder, in Virginia Beach. How many multiple murders have we seen where someone says 911, emergency. Death is happening, mounting as we speak. The emergency of the United Nations Security Council. This comes back to how do you invoke, how do you awaken the conscience, the dignity in these members 
to feel, to empathize, to go deeper into intelligent, wise action, to stay sustained in that occupation, I would call it your compassionate or your principled intelligence as a leader. You're there for a reason. The United Nations has laws. There's an intelligence about it. The most intelligent thing on the table is the right to protect people from genocide, ethnic cleansing, crimes against humanity, assassination, torture, persecution, murder, desecration, domination, a cultural genocide going on in Burma today with multiple deaths happening as we speak. That is called an acute emergency. Okay. We already anticipate China and Russia, and perhaps to some extent India and Vietnam, but China and Russia of the 15 member countries in secrecy tomorrow, we already anticipate that they will veto anything that has any connection at all to importance, stealth, action, right to protect. We anticipate that. I asked myself today, this is, this is such an epic, obvious, yet so overly looked issue. Let me just please take my time here. I, I don't know anything more important. The great environmentalist out of Canada and Vancouver, David Suzuki, in talking about the sixth mass extinction that we are presently in, and with it, mass catastrophic societal collapse, mass starvation, disruption of manufacturing, utilities, water, a real dystopian future based upon the analysis of scientists who really look at the symptoms of human behavior and what we're doing based unknowingly upon addictions to fossil fuels and to unbridled fetishism in our consumer habits. Words. He said, we are like humans in a car heading headlong into the brick wall of self-annihilation. And we in the car are arguing over where to sit. That's a bleak image to talk about climate change, catastrophic climate collapse, unthinkable dystopian futures where the word mass extinction of humans and non-humans, the tyranny on nature, the mass murder of non-humans. That is our fate as Homo sapiens. And unfortunately, we will likely take all non-humans this time with us. A sixth mass extinction happening faster than all previous five. There's no UN security emergency meeting on that brick wall of collective human ignorance headed to the brick wall of self-annihilation. The right to protect the sanctity of the future of life. The right to intervene on genocide. They should include the right to intervene on global genocide, catastrophic ecocide. Okay. We remember back September 19, 2019, the young eco-activist Greta Thunberg addressed the United Nations and spoke quite potently to the respected members of the United Nations 
on the importance of immediate intervention using such phrases. I don't want to hear any more of your fairy tales of endless economic growth. Okay. Her words and many words of men and women, older and younger, have virtually gone unheeded. Do I anticipate tomorrow's emergency meeting that the call for the right to protect principle will be enacted? If I could speak to the representative of China and Russia, India and Vietnam, I think the others will vote for, yes, immediate intervention. But one human mind that represents 1. 4, not 1.4 billion people in China, I'd say 1.3 billion people in China haven't ever experienced a day of freedom in their life under this nearly 100 million person body called the CCP, the Communist Party of China, under the genocidal nuclear armed dictator Xi Jinping. And then we have Mr. Putin in Moscow, Moscow and Beijing. And I'm asking myself, you know, if I were there in a briefing, could we get through to these two minds on the importance of immediately invoking in you a much more human conscience connected to compassion, empathy, and action to simply say yes rather than nay when the vote comes, what Mr. Rudd have said and to clerk and 43 other world leaders, former world leaders, there is no other option, my friends, at the UN security meeting tomorrow. You must invoke, you must invoke the right to protect the democratically loving, freedom loving people of Myanmar right now. I'm not saying what that action should look like. I'm going to get into that before I end today. Okay, the issue here is how to change the mind of a diplomat, a politician, a sociopath, a psychopath, a terrorist, a reluctant leader, someone who's on the fence between profit and privilege and conscience and dignity. I mean, isn't that the primordial question of now we're headed to the brick wall of global annihilation through an ecocide that we're blind to, this, this addiction that we're all part of. All of us have our foot pedal on the gas of global consumerism and we're in some form of anesthesia, denial about our own collusion, our own complicity with that global annihilation. It's, it's an existential conundrum that's almost impossible for the human brain to wrap its, its DNA and its neurons around. But we are in the most intense existential threat ever known to life on this planet. And here we are on the precipice on the day before of this colossal important meaning when terror and blood and murder and torture and the dehumanization of a population, the attempt to decapitate their dream, their creativity, their hope is being looked at and should we intervene with a principle enacted by the United Nations that they belong to, that we all belong to, civilized countries are compelled to act to stop crimes against humanity. Masak in Burma has multiple crimes against humanity. It goes so far back. I documented them back in 1989 and 1990 in a book called Burma, the Next Killing Fields. The ethnic cleansing of the Karins who are being bombed as we speak. Let's bring in representatives of Kachin State and 
Kaya state and Mon state and Shan state and Karin state and all of the Burmese that have suffered at the hands of the tyranny of dictatorships and Masak, the blood, the tears, the horror, the bones that have been broken, the cry from the screams of torture. Masak is a terrorist group on the loose and we have an obligation, civilized leaders of the world, to intervene based on invoking the 2005 principle voted upon and agreed upon by all members, the right to protect. The people of Burma want it and despite it, they're gonna keep fighting on, but we must support them by invoking tomorrow the right to protect the people and intervene in that country with peacekeeping forces. And I would encourage Britain, personally Britain, with 135 years of supremacist occupation and imperialism of the precious country of Burma, you have an obligation not just in an act of conscience, but out of respect for the decency of the mistake of subjugating the people of Myanmar for so long, you yourselves, England, don't wait for Russia or China, Vietnam or India to agree with you to act independently if you need to. America, you too. World War II. A lot of it took place in the country of Burma, 1941, 1945. To stop the wave of Japanese fascism and now to stop the terrorism, the totalitarianism, China and Russia, what is their stake in Burma? Burma, the next Tibet? God, if we were to reflect upon just the decades of horror in the Tibetan plateau, the people, the sovereign people of Tibet, a cultural and human and environmental genocide that goes on to this very day. Few people could withstand seeing the films in sequence simultaneously over the last 10 years of close to 200 Tibetans civilians, women and men, nuns and monks, sitting down cross-legged like the men and women did in Vietnam, dousing themselves with a kerosene or a gasoline and lighting themselves on fire, a torch of protest, a torch of conscience to reveal to the world the tyranny and the genocide that's going down in my own country of Tibet, virtually unseen by anyone forgotten in the annals of time, but yet it's happening right now and Burma is immolating itself in conscience. Let us not wait for the boys and girls and the nuns and monks in Burma to burn themselves in the city streets of Mandalay and Monwa, in monasteries in Rangoon. It's coming. It has turned out to be a time-tested method of invoking conscience and imagine tomorrow in the United Nations Security Council meeting in secret that England brought with it footage of the monk in Saigon City sitting down, dousing himself with kerosene and revealing to the world the horrors of ethnic cleansing of his own country. What would it take China? What would it take Russia? What would it take India, Vietnam? What would it take to break ranks with profit and pride and prejudice and put yourself in the mind and body? This is the last part of the talk today. Put yourself in the mind and body of the people. This is it. Can we get close enough to the heart of 
the people in Burma. As a leader, this is the difference, as a visionary leader by the former secretary of Utant in Burma, by Mr. Rudd right now in a visionary statement along with the clerk, embody the ability to be a noble leader requires deep capacity to empathize, to feel. To go beyond one's own ego, pride, national interests, and to feel. You know, if you can hang with me here in this last quarter of the sharing quite spontaneously. Here in my own country, back in the 1800s, we had a, among many, but we had one very famous woman, Harriet Tubman, who was a, led her black brothers and sisters from the white gulags on the East Coast in Maryland as slaves. And she talked to them. And those who had the courage to risk torture, death, disease, to make the trek from the East Coast of the Middle States into Canada and freedom. And it said that the fear at times was so great to do the right thing, to, to move and to continue to walk towards freedom. If you doubted or you hesitated, you could jeopardize the entire group trying to escape the tyranny of the terrorists. And it said that she would have a gun with her and have to keep the gun sometimes at the head of the person who hesitated to act in conscience, in courage, and to seek freedom. That to me is just really a radical image. And I'm not suggesting that I go to the United Nations Security Council tomorrow, but I suggest that England hold a metaphorical gun to the head of China and Russia and India and Vietnam, anyone else who may oppose to invoking the 2005 right to protect, immediately intervening in Burma with soldiers, peacekeeping forces, armed intervention. That's right. Enough is enough. 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 Put the terrorist group in its place. Let's take that first step. Intervene. Stop the slaughter. Put men and women who have given their lives, their conscience, their desire to belong to an armed intervention peacekeeping force called the United Nations Peacekeeping Forces. Let them go as a coalition of freedom fighters into Mandalay, Monwa, Monin, Monwa, all throughout the country, wherever the terrorist group Masak is hanging and put these men and women with high powered rifles with a mandate to protect the people and democracy and freedom, let us show up. Putting a gun to the head of the Chinese representative at the United Nations, a metaphorical gun to Mr. Putin himself and his Russian envoy. You know, an aside, you know, living as a monk for a brief period of time in Burma, even among monks and nuns, even Western friends and people from around the world who came and sat in meditation under the good guidance of Mahasi Sero or Sero Upandita, how easy and how hard it was at times to be surprised by the mind of a yogi. Some people that you would imagine being really open to the teachings of a Sayadaw, highly trained in mindfulness and concentration and in the skill of communicating the delicacy 
of navigating one's own latent fear and ego and pride, mana, loba, dosa, moha. No matter what you did out of compassion and skill, sometimes people had so much investment in their teaching role, in their money, in their likes and swipes, in their followers, in their views, in their centers, that it was almost impossible. It was impossible to hear the good teaching of the say it all, that your idea of yourself is inaccurate. You overestimate your depth, your insight, your wisdom. You have mistaken your idea of enlightenment and it's a flavor of ignorance. It is a common mistake that many yogis make. It's called mana, pride, overestimation. Even in those most refined conditions, you would think a yogi would feel the gift and the opportunity to have a cognitive surgeon, if you will, to navigate the infrastructure of ego and pride with freedom and wisdom. And still, I saw it many, 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 many times, I even saw it in myself, how you take a neurotic stand and you make wrong right. You make bad good. You mistake pride for freedom and wisdom. And so I'm thinking of China and Russia, a psychopath, a sociopath. How do you get these minds to awaken in conscience and reflection to act in empathy? I've written a book for the last seven months called Extinction X-Rated. I'm going to begin giving a series of talks coming up here in April for the month. In essence, it explores this topic. How do we stop the collective pride and ignorance and addiction that we all participate in going towards the brick wall of self-annihilation known as the sixth mass human extinction? How do I stop my participation in the mass murder of non-humans in nature, the mass murder of the environment, the mass pollution of the oceans, the mass overheating of the atmosphere? How do I participate in the genocide of the future of life? An existential, amazingly epic question. Obviously, people who are deeply immersed in metaphysical teachings out of Asia, Buddhism, know these ideas from birth and childhood, the epic challenge of how to understand freedom in the fabric of samsara, how to evoke conscience and mindfulness to overcome one's own fear, greed, and delusion, but how to invoke conscience in the mind of another, to have a collective decision to support the non-genocide of the people of Burma. Right there. Do you do as we did when we were younger? And in some cases, do, you know, even using the psychedelic molecule. And you're just so radically interrupted from the cultural familiarity of your habits. And you go, oh my God. You're in awe and you're in terror. Those of you who have experimented with intimate, professional, psychedelic-assisted, deep existential trauma evoking, overcoming psychotherapeutic existential therapy, even so, it's difficult to get that far down deep into the psyche of the mind and to restrain from denigrating behaviors that participate in genocide and ecocide. Those of you who've seen the movie A Clockwork Orange, this deep radical existential conversion therapy of Malcolm McDowell, the sociopathic white supremacist metaphorical killer, the terrorist Masak. 
how to create a condition to interrupt the apparatus of violence in the mind of the psychopath. Eyes clamped wide open, force-fed images of music and sex and violence to go down deep inside of the mind. How do you get the mind of the Chinese envoy, the Russian envoy, the Vietnamese envoy, the Indian envoy, anyone, Masek? Do you say, Mr. Ambassador from China and Russia, Burma is your wife. You must embody the people of Burma as your wife, your family, your children. You're a leader, not a puppet of profit and privilege. You're asking me to embody through a deliberate exercise in this United Nations secret emergency 911 meeting tomorrow initiated by England to feel the people of Burma and the civil disobedience movement as my wife, my child, my husband, my family? Yes, you're a leader. Bringing that kind of image into the room, taking it out of cognitive words and language, we need an emotional awakening. If I were there, no satire intended, I would call off the meeting to be a couple of hours. I would have it as a weekend in which the doors were locked, there were psychiatrists on board, and those people were encouraged to low dose with the finest, most organic psychedelic, with the molecule of the MDMA, with psychiatrists and trauma expert therapists to be there to excavate their own prejudice and callousness and fear and to have images of the people of Burma. You are here as an elected member of the Security Council to feel we are at the precipice of invoking the right to protect a country from genocide, ethnic cleansing, crimes against humanity, persecution and terror. It's happening right now in Burma and we can't wait anymore, according to Mr. Rudd and Mr. de Klerk and 43 other former world leaders and the greater citizens of the world know this as well. By all means necessary tomorrow, bring in everything humanly possible. Bring in photographs of the Third Reich in World War II. Bring in Dachau and Auschwitz. Bring in the killing fields of Cambodia. Bring in the bludgeoned skulls of Rwanda. Bring in the gulags of South Africa. Bring in auditory tapes of the screaming of women being gang raped in the gulags of Burma by Masak. We need an awakening tomorrow. We don't need words. We want outcome. And I'll conclude here. I'm very fond of quoting something that I learned from the incarcerated, at the moment, jailed, imprisoned, State Councilor of Burma, Do Ong San Suu Kyi. The civil disobedience movement, Burma's struggle for independence, for freedom, democracy, rule of law, has been called a revolution of the spirit. The essence, as she said to me and to the world, is courage the courage to care for things larger than your own self-interest, United Nations Security Council. The courage to care for things larger than your own self-interest. That's the operating phrase to embody empathy. She concluded by saying, that is best understood by the capacity to see the truth of a situation. You're an elected leader of an emergency council of 15 prominent members, 
Your role is to see the truth. Is there ethnic cleansing? Is there genocide? Are there crimes against humanity? Is there terror and torture in the Golden Land of Myanmar? You must see that truth. We must have unmistakable evidence tomorrow that those 15 members, it's unambiguous that they see the truth of the terror. Next to Aung San Suu Kyi said, we must have the capacity to feel that evidence. We must internalize it. We must inhabit it. We must make it our own. That's our role as leaders, not puppets of profit. Feel. Right here, that's a very delicate area to feel. How to breathe into the space of that which is so uncomfortable. Imagine having images tomorrow and there is a thought leader, a psychologist, a mindfulness teacher, a prominent theologian who's encouraging the 15 members. I want to walk you through, in my own humble way, the importance of the three word phrase by Da Aung San Suu Kyi, see the truth, feel the truth, act on behalf of what you see and feel. Here in the second word, feel, we can't turn away. Your role as 15 members is not to turn away. Feel. Do everything you can to personalize what you feel. Those aren't people that speak a foreign language. Those are human beings. Personalize it even more. They're friends. They're global citizens. Make that girl that was shot Make that teenager that was assassinated, make those two NLD Muslim elected leaders that were taken from their home, tortured and forcibly had their mouths pried open and poured hot acid down their throats and told family members to pick up their bodies the next day. The right to protect is a principle in the United Nations Charter. And you're here today to make a decision to vote unanimously on the necessity as the former Prime Minister of Australia and de Klerk and 43 other elected former leaders said, you must act, there's nothing left on the table. Feel, don't turn away. We're hoping for an epic emotional opening. And last is to act, not turn away. Do Aung San Suu Kyi, the essence of our revolution of the spirit, our struggle for democracy, our second great independence movement. Alan, it is simple. See the truth, feel the truth, act on the truth. See the truth of democracy as preferable to tyranny and dictatorship. Feel the truth of rule of law and the universality of freedom of mind to create and to dream as better than tyranny, imprisonment and torture and totalitarianism and genocide and to act on behalf of those timeless principles that are the very soul of the United Nations doctrine called the Universality of Declaration of Human Rights, a three-page document that is your Bible, 15 members tomorrow. That is your Bible. Read the preamble, see the preamble, feel the preamble, act on behalf of the preamble. The right to protect is your mandate tomorrow it should be unambiguous to place for once in human history, in modern times, profit, privilege, prestige, political puppeting, oil, gas, money, sex, food, cars, plastic, aside, the sovereign, breathtaking, 
ancient culture of Burma, the Golden Land. 135 ethnicities, 100 different dialects and languages, Jews and atheists and Muslims and Buddhists, agrarian and intellectuals and poets and dancers and hip hop artists and rap artists and death metal singers, a rad culture of diversity you never have seen, and I'm very biased, such an extraordinarily beautiful, multicultural, radiant land of people. Don't let Burma become the next Tibet. Mr. Ambassador from China, Russia, come on, man. Give peace a chance. Put your heart into the people, feel as your family, make a decision, resurrect hope, resurrect the sanctity of the United Nations. And I will encourage you, Mr. Former Prime Minister of Australia Rudd, I would encourage you, England, Britain, initiating this emergency meeting, and I would encourage you, America, and I would also encourage you, Mr. Trudeau of Canada, four countries I've pointed, regardless of the outcome, you know it's time to act. And you gave our most trusted body in the world, the United Nations, yes, 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 they got fault. You gave them every opportunity to act. And if they don't, walk your talk. You act. You've got every bit of firepower in England, Canada, Australia, and America for countries rooted in democracy, in decency, in creativity, and the right to dream. And I encourage you, four leaders, regardless, you're giving the process a chance, you act. You act immediately. You act in conscience to support the people of Burma. They have voted, they have spoken, they have bled, they are dying, they're being tortured, and they're crying, and they're gonna continue their civil disobedience movement regardless, but show up with why you are a leader. Put women and men in uniform and arms on the ground in Burma and protect the people from the terrorist organization Masak and draw a line, an ethical line with China and with Russia. They said, no, okay, fine. You can live with your no. But just like we did with World War II, you said no, and we said, yes, fine, live with our leadership, learn from our behavior, and we're going to go into Burma regardless of what you think and do. Show them the teaching of visionary leadership. Action, action, action. See the truth, feel the truth, and act the right to protect the timeless principle enacted by the United Nations in 2005. When a country is being persecuted by a body, an organization, a militia, and there is clear evidence of ethnic cleansing, genocide, crimes against humanity, ongoing systemic torture and persecution, it is our duty in conscience to overcome our prejudice, our biases, and to act to protect those people. Immediately, no hesitation, no waiting. That is what we do as human beings who care about freedom. Act. We will be watching you tomorrow. And we expect, regardless of the outcome, how amazing it would be, 
to see and read headlines worldwide. The United Nations Security Council decides unanimously to enact the 2005 principle to act in support, the right to protect. We are coming into your country, Burma. Mr. Masak, you are exposed. Pull back. We are coming in because you're an out of control terrorist psychopath. Otherwise, England, Australia, Canada, and America, you act, and you act decisively, and you act immediately, and you put soldiers and ships on the ground, in the water, around the beloved country of Myanmar, and let us have hope and give peace and democracy a breathtaking expression of support. The people are waiting. The world is waiting. We don't need any more blood, no more terror, no more assassinations, no more words. See, feel, act, 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 act. From my heart to yours, thank you.